Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a Grixis colored Demons deck featuring a Fateful Handoff as sort of an alternate win condition. This 4 mana sorcery lets us draw cards equal to the mana value of target artifact or creature we control, and then an opponent gains control of that permanent. So a pretty risky card to play in a lot of circumstances since you don't want to be giving the opponent free stuff, but in this case we can potentially win the game if we hand off an Archfiend of the Dross with only one oil counter remaining. The 4 mana 6-6 six, six flyer enters with 4 oil counters total, and at the beginning of our upkeep we have to remove an oil counter from it, then if there are no oil counters left we lose the game. So if we hand off an Archfiend with a single counter, then the opponent will lose on their following upkeep. And for as long as we control Archfiend, the opponent also loses 2 life when one of their creatures dies. So in a lot of circumstances we can just win the game with damage by attacking for 6 repeatedly, and maybe draining the opponent for 2 while killing their creatures, but every now and then we can actually sneak in a win with Fateful Handoff when the demon was maybe forced to stay back on defense. And then we've got another demon that we're happy to hand off, Solkanar the Tainted, a 5 mana 5-5. Five five. At the beginning of our end step we get to choose one mode that hasn't been chosen yet between drawing a card, making the opponent lose 2 and gain 2, we can deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker, or we have to exile Solkanar and return it to the battlefield under an opponent's control. So that will reset Solkanar, and then the opponent gets to benefit from its various abilities. So now instead what we do is we make use of the first three useful modes, and then before having to give it back to the opponent, we hand it off instead, get to draw five cards in the process. The opponent does get to keep Solkanar and attack for it for one single turn, but then end of turn they'll have to give it back to us, and then it will be refreshed where we can use all three first modes once again. So that's the plan behind our Fateful Handoff, and then the rest of our deck is kind of your typical Grixis midrange, with the exception of four copies of Dreadfugue as a discard spell to maybe take away any interaction the opponent may have for our Archfiend plus Handoff combo. And then Fable, of course, very powerful, gives us some needed card selection to get rid of excess copies of Handoff to dig for our missing combo pieces. And then the Reflection of Kiki Jiki can also be very fun copying Archfiend, as we get to make a hasty 6-6 six, six flyer, and then controlling multiple Archfiends means that if we kill opposing creatures we now get to drain the opponent for 4, which also quickly adds up. And then we've got some interaction with Cutdown, as well as Go for the Throat as cheap spot removal. Harvester, also a creature that can be used as removal, great to copy with our reflection as well. Make Disappear as a cheap counter spell, and then two copies of Reckoner Bankbuster as another card draw engine that can help find our missing pieces, can also easily crew it with our larger demons, and then two copies of Brotherhood's End as another sweeper that can be quite effective against the aggro decks and the format. And then our mana base also has a few new goodies with a Fast Lands, four copies of Blackleaf Cliffs, as well as two copies of Dark Slick Shores. And then we've got the various channel lands for added interaction. Not playing any basic lands since there's not a lot of Field of Ruin being played, and against an opposing Boseju we can always fetch up our Xander's Lounge. And then there's a few Pain lands, and then the Innistrad Duels to round out our mana base. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, our hand seems keepable. Got Brotherhood's End to catch us back up against an aggressive deck. Fable to maybe dig for a handoff, and now we could also Fugue to have a look. And if our opponent's on a mono blue counter spell deck, I wouldn't mind clearing a path for Fable. Could wait to cast Fugue in the same turn as Fable, in which case we're more likely to resolve it in case they have multiple counter spells. But um, I would like to play Fable on three, so I think we Fugue now. And opponent did indeed have a negate, there's Hoddy Jin. So we'll grab Negates, and then they've got a chance of drawing into another counter with Consider. Otherwise we'll get our Fable in play at least. Cut down not particularly effective in this matchup, so we'd love to discard it to the second chapter. And then Brotherhood's End can go as well. Three damage, not enough to kill Hoddy Jin. Opponent casts Impulse. I don't think they'll be tapping out for Hoddy Jin in this matchup, since there's too many removal spells we could theoretically have. So our opponent's gonna keep up their instant speed plays like Thirst. So Brotherhood's End, Cutdown can go. 
and harvester a slight upgrade. So let's attack. Could already play Solkanar. As far as we know, it would resolve, but of course her opponent has seen a lot of cards in the meantime, so that's no guarantee. So I think I prefer playing Harvester here, tapped Blackleaf Cliffs, hang on to Soaring City as potential interaction for Haughty Jin. And as a scatter would have been quite painful. And then maybe try to resolve Solkanar when the coast is clear. Okay, Ponan does go for the Jin. And a fateful handoff. Could be quite nice as well. Okay, so if I attack with a Shaman, then Solkanar could finish off Hadi Jin if they block. So maybe that's our starting point here. Alternatively, I could just channel Suring City Bounce Hadi Jin. But then I should have done it before attacking in case of a protection spell. I'm just going to take it anyway. Alright, in that case, I think play Solkanar is fine. And then I want to hang on to Soaring City, so I'm just going to play Tapped Cliffs here. Possible a Make Disappear could counter it here. If not, we'll draw a card right away. Opponent Impulses for one mana. So at least we're on the board. Soaring City gives us a way to send Hadi Jin back. Reflection can copy the Shaman token. Okay, put him bouncing Solkanar, at least we got our value. Hadi Jin attacks. And a Tolarian Terror on defense now. Can copy our Shaman, attack with a copy. Go for the throw, it was a good draw. Yeah, I guess we'll start here. Now let's say we also attack with a real Shaman. I could go for the Throat Hadi Jin and still have the mana to play Solkanar and target the Terror, but then I wouldn't be able to pay for Ward. Maybe I just attack with a copy here, since I don't want to lose a real one. Opponent takes it. In that case... Yeah, we could go for the Throat Hadi Jin. Could just replay Solkanar, keep up two mana. And then wait for the opponent to tap out for Thirst and then kill Hadi Jin. And then I'll put a stop in my own end step here to make sure they Thirst first, discard whatever they want. But before they get to untap, I'll go for the throat. But just want to make sure to cast this after they've decided what to discard, since that might influence their decision. Hadi Jin down. And we get to draw. Archfiend, not bad either. Can get in the way of a Hadi Jin. Terror attacks, I'll take it. Sulkanar has more to give. And there's another Terror. And another Hadi Jin. Okay, that could be a problem. Now, Soaring City at least channels for 3 mana here, since we control a Legendary. So if I attack with a Shaman token, I don't think our opponent's blocking necessarily, since they would potentially lose their creature to the 3 damage from Solkanar. I might want to keep Reflection to also copy Archfiend to get an extra large blocker out of the deal. Maybe I do just attack with uh, Shaman without copying it. I will leave Solkanar back now in case something bad happens to the Archfiends. Play Archfiends and then I can still channel Soaring City at the very least. Okay, Archfiend resolves, and we'll pass. And then now, just uh, drain for two.
Opponent goes digging once again. If our opponent attacks, I could copy Archfiends before blockers, although then a bounce spell in response would be very bad. So I think we just accept the trade. Could also just take the 8 from Hardy Jin, put Archfiend and Solkanar in front of both Tolarian Terrors, and then still bounce Hardy Jin. Kind of like that idea as well. As opposed to trying to copy Archfiend and running into a potential Fading Hope. And then we can still copy end of turn. Right, shore up to Pump Tolarian Terror. I think we let that happen. So Hardy Jin's got 9 power. We fall to 2. Archfiend drains for 2. And then end of turn, copy Archfiends. And if our opponent doesn't have a bounce spell, they should be dead to it. And now make disappear for insurance. Can copy our Archfiend a second time if we'd like. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems decent. Double hand off a little bit redundant, but we can maybe discard one to the blood token from Harvester. And then we've got Archfiend plus handoff. Do I cut down an officer? Yeah, seems fine. It's gonna deal quite a bit of damage early on. And that way I can keep Harvester as maybe an answer to an opposing Thalia, for instance. It's gonna be another officer. Okay, so we desperately need to find another land here. So I think Harvester, kill Officer, then sack the Blood Token. And one hand off can go. It does kind of reveal our plan a little bit. But that's fine. Double Archfiend could still go the distance. Veteran... Happy to take out before it gets out of range. Could have also kept cut down as an answer to Brutal Cathar, but just want to be efficient here. Can play our Fable, which also likely to be a target of a Cathar. It's going to be Shield of Argive instead. That one we would love to block with Archfiends. Shores does not come into play untapped here. Could always... Um, attack with a Shaman to let me play Archfiend and there's a chance they wouldn't block. So I think Shores goes and then I think I have to hang on to both Archfiends in case one gets answered. Although it's a close call. Could of course just find a removal spell for Brutal Cathar which would also work. Alright, fine. Alright, found another tap land. So I will be attacking, hoping they don't block. If I had an untapped land and they blocked, I would have been able to Sulkanar finish off shield. Opponent did not block, so that's good for us. Play Archfiend. And uh, yeah, if there's no Brutal Cathar, this can maybe hold off an attack. Could also see Soaring City being channeled to bounce Archfiend. Thalia's fine. And Officer. Alright, so opponent's on the card draw plan now. We're happy to sit back with our Archfiends. Found another one. So do I just play another Archfiend here? Could also attack with a Shaman and then play Solkanar, which threatens to at least kill the Officer. That seems slightly better. Just need to make sure we eventually get back up to 5 mana to cast the Handoff. Since uh, Thalia is taxing us here. Opponent's gonna draw with our Sky Strike. But we'll try and take it out as soon as possible here. Okay, we've got a couple turns to just sit back and eventually cast our hand off. Veteran, that's fine. Opponent's attacking. Does this imply maybe an Iganjo being channeled? Who knows? Uh, possible they're also trying to set up a lethal force to win with Harbin to fly the team. Either way, block with Archfiend since we have another one. Don't think there's a reason to double block. I guess if they have a bounce spell, they could bounce my one blocker, so maybe I should double block. Alright, Solkanar takes the damage, but no additional tricks here. Okay, found our land, so we can actually hand off now. 
So, plan is simple, just play Archfiends. Can even copy one with Reflection. Solkanar can gain two life or draw. Safest is probably to gain life, but don't think it matters. And then next turn, hand off for Demon, and that should be game. Awesome. Officer could find a Cathar, but they wouldn't be able to cast it. And yeah, there's Harbin. So, could actually fly their team, but we've got two flying demons. So that should keep us alive. And could have even copied a third one. But we'll make one end of turn, and our opponent explodes. Sadly, don't get to hand off the demon here, but would have been able to win with that as well. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems decent. Bangbuster into Fable, setting up an early Sulkanar. Up against what could be a rat aggro. Turn to Felden, we're happy to go for the throat. But we'll wait and see if maybe a Squee shows up that we would rather take out. Felden's also legendary, so better to wait until attackers are declared to make sure they couldn't play a second copy. Swiss Spear is a good one too. And an Impulse. Alright, opponent off to a great start here. Finding Phoenix Chick and another Swiss Spear. So they can play both of those next turn. So... I think we still take out Felden and then hope that our Shaman Token survives, but... A one mana burn spell would be a disaster. Can't quite play Solkanar unless our Shaman gets to connect. Put him going for Squee plus Swiss Spear. Alright, that's not too bad actually. We can block a Swiss Spear and then our Shaman allows us to play Solkanar next turn, which can also take out a creature. And then Springs and maybe even Bankbuster can go. Don't see myself finding the time to activate it. Okay, cut down was great too. So we have a lot of options now. Could even go with Archfiends and then attack to cut down Squee. Although getting Sulkanar going might just be better here. Which means attacking, playing Sulkanar and then taking out Squee. And then next turn I can gain life with Solkanar as well. Another Impulse. Could find some more action and a Lightning Strike. One of those. So if opponent attacks all out, let's say I don't block Swiss Spear, they Lightning Strike my face, then I would fall to one life. Potentially dead to an unknown burn spell. So I think I have to block Swift Spear. And then we'll see if they want to finish off Solkanar here before I can gain life with it. At least we got our value. Kill the Squee and trade it for Swift Spear and Lightning Strike. And we're still at 6. Now Squee is likely to come back in the next turn or two. So we want to keep up cut down. And then now we can play an Arch Fiends alongside it. So, those are token attack. I think I'm happy keeping it back on defense. Especially if there's removal spell end of turn. I want to make sure we have enough blockers back. But I'm just discarding a mountain for now. And then reflection copying Archfiend could also be very effective. I wonder if her opponent even attacks with Squee if they get it back. Because if they don't, I could maybe wait to cut down until after I copy Archfiend to get multiple triggers to drain the opponent for two. But that might be a bit too greedy. Alright, there's Squee. So to cut down now or to wait? Alright, Phoenix Chick. So opponent is tapped out. So if they were to attack with everyone, what happens? Then I can block Squee to 1-1, one, one, still take 2. Down to four, so not that to a lightning strike at least. And then next turn, could I kill them? If I copy Archfiends, 
That's 12 plus 4 from cut down and two more from the shaman, so that would be lethal. So I think we do let them attack if they want to. Bone goes all out. So block, block, block. And I guess Archfiend also just drains them for a bunch here. Which I hadn't even accounted for. So they're dead in multiple ways. But this is the most satisfying one. Alright, awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems decent. Can't quite play a 2-drop on curve, since we have all the slow lanes here. And uh, which one to play first? Probably a blue one for make disappear. Have four black leaf cliffs, so we've got more untapped red we can draw as opposed to blue. And we did find the springs, facing adaptive. Don't think I need to make disappear on two, so I'm okay playing a harvester. And then we can curve into fable into archfiend if we'd like. Beast Caller can still be taken out by Harvester. Could also trade here for Adaptive. Close call. I think Beast Caller is probably more important for me to take out. Since those counters can actually move around. And we did find a handoff. Perfect. So, yeah. Take out Beast Caller. Don't have to play Fable. Could just keep up a counter spell here. Make sure the opponent doesn't get out of hand, and then Archfiends sit back and try and go for handoff. Might be the plan. Okay, Spring. Does seem worth countering, giving all future creatures haste. And then no need to use my blood token, since I'm happy with all the cards in hand. Okay, double Archfiend kind of threatens to win the game by itself now. I'm hoping we can find an excuse to just sit back and use Handoff as our win condition. Okay, partners. That can start growing the team. So we might conceivably want a double Archfiend on defense now. If I just attack for 6, we would be threatening lethal next turn, which probably would have been better, but we're here for the handoff. Adaptive attacks. So, best they can do is probably like a Tyvar stand. I don't imagine they'll have a 5 damage instance. So, let's double block. Opponent kills the fresh Archfiend, which is what we like to see with a handoff in hand. Okay, adaptive down, opponent still takes four. And the Raiju second main. Yeah, Archfiend's doing a good job on defense at least. Can Harvester plus Fable. And then Harvester threatens to take out partners next turn. Now we have to be a bit more careful with Archfiend, since it just needs to survive one more turn. Possible our opponent just wants to use Archfiend as a their win condition now. Takes out Harvester. And Kumano. Alright, I think we're finally gonna get there. Hand off Archfiend. Do we get one last attack in, just because? Sure. Might see them chump with the partners here. Perfect. And here's a little presence. Okay. There we have it. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, hand seems good. Got our early interaction, Fable into Archfiend, up against another Grixis deck. Doesn't 
Does their opponent have their own fable? They do. So we'll cut down the token and get our own fable. So far, don't have anything I actively want to discard. Maybe one land can go. Opponent discarding a Flash Gorger. Possible. They're also a Reanimator deck. Go for the Throat, killing our token. And a Bangbuster was a good draw. So, yeah, one Springs can go. And then now I'm liking Bangbuster since it plays around Make Disappear. And then we can keep up the draw here. As well as go for the throats. Opponent could be playing Invoke Despair. It's going to be a tricky matchup to resolve our uh, Fateful Handoff and win with it. Cruelty could read ahead and reanimate a Flesh Gorger, but they're probably going to start by taking away my Archfiend. So that's too bad. Can still draw with a bank buster. And Solkanar. You can kill Reflection here. So that looks good. And then we can crew bank buster attack with it as well. And we'll fugue next turn. Maybe getting rid of whatever they searched up with a second chapter. So we're on the board. And a Gix's command to just destroy our two creatures here. Alright, could have been worse. Next turn our opponent will be reanimating either Solkanar or Flesh Gorger, most likely. So, getting another Fable going in the meantime could maybe find a better answer, since Go for the Throat's not going to work. Okay, opponent holding Flesh Gorger, Stern Lesson, and a Blade Coil Serpent. Yeah, that's probably what I need to take away here. So, yeah, we're in a bit of trouble. Opponent's deck. It's got a pretty powerful late game. They seem tempted by Solkanar. They can kill our Shaman token with it. But then go for the throat, kill Solkanar. So Flesh Gorger seems to make a bit more sense. But our opponent's a little bit jealous here. I guess they still get to have a Flesh Gorger anyway. Okay, opponent returns the favor. Make disappear a turn late. So I don't think I can keep it anymore. Found an Archfiend, that's decent. Still doesn't outrace a Flesh Gorger. But uh, we can play it, take out Solkanar. And drain the opponent for two. And then copying an Archfiend with Reflection could be quite powerful. Can we somehow find a fateful handoff here to set up the win? A lounge we can cycle. And probably start by drawing with a bank buster. Cut down doesn't help. Another option was to stay back, crew Bankbuster, and then double block Flash Gorger with Reflection and Bankbuster. I think we're on a different plan now. So once Reflection loses Summoning Sickness, I can attempt to copy Archfiend, and then set up a double block that way, maybe involving Bankbuster as well. Although we haven't found our handoff yet, so unclear whether that's going to work out. Opponent in the meantime digging with a Stern Lesson. Pretty good when you're casting expensive artifacts, so the power stone's still useful. And works with our kind of reanimator plan with cruelty. So we'll take another seven. And 
and Poten found an answer to reflection. Okay, found our handoff, although it's a turn early. So by activating Bangbuster we get a pilot token, so that can help double block Flash Gorger. And then hope to maybe find another creature here, so we don't have to block with Archfiend itself. Alright. Pass a turn. Kinda hope they don't attack with Flash Gorger. Maybe hoping they would win the game by removing the last counter from Archfiends. And then we can hand it off. Alright, go for the throat kills it, and that kills our chances as well. It's too bad. GG, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Some cheap interaction, and then Solconar to hopefully pull ahead. And in this case, I could see myself casting a turn 1 Fugue, since we can then still cut down or potentially go for the throat on 2. And yeah, against a Mono White deck, taking away a Thalia could be important. So let's give it a shot. Okay, and there's Thalia, leaving them with a Brutal Cathar, which we can maybe cut down in response to them trying to exile one of our creatures. Frontline are not too threatening when it's just by itself, but now Officer we might want to get rid of. And then turn 3 Fables looking good, although I may want to wait and hang on to Cut Down to kill Cathar in response to it exiling my Shaman token. Okay, Siege Veteran. So yeah, I guess now we're just on the Brotherhood's end plan. We'll be left with a bunch of 1-1 one -one tokens from Siege Veteran. Not sure how much of a problem that's going to be. Could also cut down Siege Veteran right now. And then... Still plan to Brotherhood Sand, in which case they won't have any tokens left. Yeah, that's maybe just a safer line. They don't get the extra plus one counters this turn. And we can keep the board clear. And then if we're patient enough, I can maybe play Fable and keep up Gopher to throw it for Brutal Cathar. Although Pun's just gonna run it out since they need some pressure. So that's fine by me. Drew another cut down anyway. And then we can hope to play Solkanar next turn. Opponent draws with Basilica. And let's it switch to Knight. Okay, we found another demon here. So what do we get rid of? Maybe a cut down, even though it's a pretty good card in the matchup. Could also just play Archfiends, and then if our opponent plays two spells to switch it back, I can still kill it before it actually exiles anything next turn. So I could submit zero. And then just play Archfiend and pass. And then Solkanar also potentially an answer to the Brute. Okay, Thalia. Plus another Cathar, so now they both will transform back. And now with Thalia out, I don't actually have the mana to respond to both. So we have to decide which creature to save. And I guess we save the Shaman, since that one actually gets exiled for good. So I want to kill the leftmost Brutal Cathar. Could also kill Thalia, and then kill Cathar. And then Solkanar will be able to kill the other Cathar eventually. That seems fine. So kill Thalia, while the Archfiend's still in play, also drains him for two. And then kill the leftmost Brutal Cathar. So we keep our Shaman. Demon does get exiled temporarily. But then the Shaman survives and can attack now. And then now we'll have the mana to play Solkanar next turn. 
Solkanara gets back his demon buddy. And we can try and set up a win with a handoff if we find it, but we're probably gonna end up winning before that's the case. So we'll just play Solkanar. Since there is a chance your opponent can cast two more spells next turn, transform it back, and then they would be able to exile another creature, which could get out of hand. And at 14, I think we can afford three life. Opponent a mana short of activating Beachhead, and the Brute itself also not a soldier, so wouldn't get pumped by the Beachhead anyway. Okay, so we'll pass it back. End of turn, I can copy the Archfiend, actually. And then it will persist throughout the next turn. Opponent just flashing in a reinforcements. And even if our opponent were to top deck another Cathar, it's still nighttime, so they wouldn't actually exile anything. And then Double Demon should be able to cross the finish line. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems keepable. Question is whether we cut down on one. Probably want to guarantee Harvester instead. So I'll go with the Tapped Marsh. Okay, put on potentially a Poison deck. Play Harvester. No need to keep a MiG disappear just yet. If they offer the trade, I think I'll accept. Since they might have a lot of ways to proliferate, so preventing that first poison counter can be important. And I'm sure they'll present more targets for cutdown. Okay, few can have a look, and then we can still cut down, or maybe keep a MiG disappear if that's more important. Infernal Grasp, Skull Dweller, grab the Infernal Grasp. And then we're probably happy to kill the Siphoner. Even though I could potentially block Siphoner, which is not necessarily true for Skull Dweller. So maybe actually kill Skull Dweller here. And then with any untapped land we play Archfiend. Do I want to discard with my Blood Token here? Probably. I think I still get rid of one Archfiend, keep Solkanar as a potential card draw engine. Alright, so next turn we'll be able to play Archfiend at least. And opponent returning the favor. We'll counter this one. Okay, just waiting for a handoff now. Solkanar could also kill the Siphoner right away, or draw. It's probably better value than playing Archfiend first. And uh, sure, we'll take out their creature. So now if they kill Solkanar, we don't feel too bad. Another Siphoner. And there's our handoff, perfect. So, play Archfiend attack. And then we'll see if we want to hand off Solkanar or Archfiend this game. Both would be fun. Now there is the risk of killing the opponent before we manage to hand off, but Shieldred is actually nice to see since that will potentially trade with Solkanar. Solkanar still has the Drain 2 mode available. Probably don't want to draw a ton of cards with Shieldred out. But I could attack with Solkanar, leave Archfiend back, and then trade accordingly. Opponent takes five. So either way, probably fine to hang on to Brotherhood's end for a turn. Okay, Skull Dweller, another creature that dies to our three damage. And our opponent hangs back. So a handoff would be incredibly painful with Shieldred out right now. I think the plan is still to hand off the Archfiend instead. Fable, just to make a 2-2 I guess. And then Solkanar can attack. If I just cast a Brotherhood's End and attacked with both of my demons, they would have been essentially dead on board since they take 4 from the Archfiend triggers plus 6 in the air. 
But we're here to win with handoff, so... Just gonna pass. Opponent against Sulkanar. They can enjoy it for a turn. And then next turn, hopefully, win with our Archfiend. Opponent's tapped out. So unless Sulkanar draws into an Infernal Grasp here, we should be good. So yeah, Brotherhood's End would win the game if I just attack. Since we would drain for 4, attack for 6. So to avoid our opponent conceding before that happens, I'm just gonna hand off Demon now. We'll take 8 damage of Shieldred down to 2. But then we should win in the opponent's next upkeep. Alright, there we have it. Took a little bit of uh, effort here to win the game with handoff as opposed to just winning with damage. But uh, yeah, still happy we got to pull it off here. So overall, what do we think of this Grixis Demons deck? It's probably a fine deck even without the handoff. Seems like we can win a lot of games with Archfiends backed up by removal. Of course, we've got a solid core of Grixis cards like Harvester with Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So those don't really need a lot of help to be powerful. So yeah, pretty fun deck, not the most competitive option, but if you were to replace some of the cards like Handoff with just more removal and other interaction, you would probably have a pretty solid deck. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.